So often we experience things that are happening in the world that are tragic and we hold this level of bystander trauma because we feel so powerless to do anything to change it. And today, as I have been sitting in in this place of allowing a part to die away within me, and I find myself in this space where I'm not very used to sitting and doing nothing, being still to go home. And as I have been still all day, allowing for these parts and pieces of me to die away, listening to worship music because it fills me up, and um, I came across a post on somebody's page about the incident that happened last night um, between Will Smith and Chris Rock, and... It just inspired this whole thing that I started writing. And and then I, um, instead of posting it, I was like, I saw how it was a perfect time to, to teach about rewriting things etherically. Because as I was writing this, I was, my spirit was going to each and every one of them. And etherically making peace and so then I turned to my own life and the struggles that I've been having and this morning I felt the need to gather a group and and um, stand for righteousness in my own life and I didn't go forward with it because I was I was waiting for a few people to respond and I thought well you know what why don't I just rewrite this etherically and so I went into prayer and rewrote this and spoke to this person etherically mind you and as soon as I got done I received an email about having a meeting tomorrow between all parties. And it just is moments like this where God shows up so strongly to show you that you are so supported in your prayers and that what we do with our intentions make a difference and how we can be and bring the peace to this world. And it doesn't mean that we have to physically get on a plane or be there. The physical aspect of us is so, so minute compared to the multi-dimensional aspects of us. And the fact that we are all connected. It's in these moments when we witness something like this on a global scale and whether it is between celebrities or between warring countries. It's when we witness it in our outside reflection that allows for us to have um, our own opinions about it. But putting all opinions aside and stepping into truth and to see objectively is important. It's by us witnessing these things that we can start to see what the problems are. And the problem is divided we fall. And what is righteous is that everyone should have stood together last night and said, no, this is not okay. And I understand now why I was called to go live at 1010 last night for group healing because when we see these things in our world it is crying for love it is asking for us to love it harder someone should have turned to Jada 
Will's wife, to hold her until she surrendered the fear. For that fear in her is creating attack thoughts that are asking for her man to be a warrior to defend against love. Everyone is crying for love in this situation. No one is the bad guy. What was done was not right. It was not righteous. But there's a way to bring love to all parties without demonizing one. Because when we demonize one behavior and push it away, it doesn't shift the consciousness. To make somebody ashamed of who they are or what they did does not shift the consciousness. So if we want to take a more loving approach, then let's try something different. Seeing that everyone in this situation is crying for love. To love them all. But to stand for the righteousness of Christ consciousness. To know the truth that we are all one. That you cannot cut me without bleeding yourself. And although you may not see your own blood, I assure you, we are all bleeding when we do this to each other. It is not okay that we allow harm against another to be justified because of who someone is, as if it is some type of sick popularity contest. It is not justified to protect our fears and our traumas, lashing out at one another when they brush over the wounds within us that they did not create. And even if they did, it still does not justify your actions. It still does not justify the righteousness of your, your abuse. This insanity needs to end. If I were there last night, I would have stopped Will by standing in front of him, hugging him until he surrendered the fight. And as I say this to you now, my spirit goes to all of them etherically to resolve this situation and bring love to all parties. And I invite you all to join with me, visualizing yourself bringing love to all parties in this situation. Instead of shaming one, demonizing one. That doesn't fix anything, guys. That is getting lost in the illusion. Going to them now after this has happened in the present moment turning to the I am presence within us I would turn to Jada and ask her to surrender the fear reminding her that no amount of hair can cover up the holy child of God within her and I would go over to Chris and bring Jada over to him. So in her softness and in her vulnerability, while having comfort around her, support, asking her to share why his comment hurt her. And then her feeling Chris's deep remorse because that comment was never intended to be harmful or hurtful. And in what they would both learn from this about each other, allowing for them to embrace and bring healing to this blow up. Because every situation that we experience allows for us to come closer together or farther apart. And divided we fall. We only have love in a call for love. Fear disappears when we step into that truth. I would turn to Will and bring both of the others over to him. And I would hug him until his body shook and surrendered all of the pain and fear within him. All of the pain and fear that he has been carrying while feeling powerless to make his wife feel better. To make peace within himself that brings 
peace into his world. I would ask him if hitting Chris made him feel better, getting him to acknowledge that it served no purpose, then asking him to share with Chris why he was so triggered by the comment. And then to Jada, asking if Asking her if witnessing her husband slap another man to protect her made her feel better. And she would admit that it did for a moment. That she felt protected against an attack thought that lives inside of her. An attack that no one can protect her from. But her own willingness to surrender the attack thoughts and fear allowing herself to feel all as she surrenders more and more to God's love and the truth of who she is. That an attack against another will never bring her peace. It will never bring her whatever it is that she is running from. Allowing herself to feel all as she surrenders more and more. Inviting her to step into the truth of who she is, that she is a holy child of God, that they and we are all holy children of God, never separated from the mind of Christ, always able to surrender the fight and remember the truth, that only love is real. All else is a cry to be loved harder. So in loving the hell out of this world, I would invite the four of us to hug each other and then hold hands, lifting arms facing the audience and invite them all to receive this lesson on how to create peace within themselves and bring God's peace, love, and grace to the world being the embodiment of Christ on earth. And so it is. And so it is done on earth as it is in heaven. I invite you all to to participate in etherically rewriting your own realities and the trials and tribulations that you see in the world around us. It is so incredibly difficult to see the truth in our own situations when we are being when we are perceiving our own injustice or hurt or need to defend none of them can see the whole picture clearly if you look at Jada she is in this moment where she is feeling like so much of her self-worth came from the way that she looks and this illness or um, disharmonic frequencies with inside of her body is causing an ailment that is making her hair fall out and it is often when we are feeling so frustrated with our own lives like wanting to pull our hair out that our hair will start refusing to grow. There's other reasons for this manifestation of this ailment that is simply her body asking for her to listen, to pay attention, for her to go higher, for her to connect with God, for her to not find her worth and value in the way that she looks or the status that she holds. And This war that is happening within her is, of course, being projected onto her husband, who is not a victim. It is just he is used to always being able to make her smile. He's used to making things better through his personality. 
but this attack within her and the situations that we are experiencing in our in our world and then how that is making him feel afraid and unsafe and like it is shattering the illusion of his own um, ego feeling that status and money and um, character gets you anywhere truly and this is calling for him to go higher and so he is experiencing having the woman that he loves ask him to be a warrior and that doesn't feel right for him but he looks to society and he sees what is masculinity what is that and in a desperate attempt to find what that is they are creating wars while the women are sitting there justified, feeling justified, because finally somebody defended them. When no one can defend you against that war within. And belittling our men and making them feel less than because they won't fight someone for you. It's not okay. It is a very powerless place to be to experience someone you love be ill and not be able to help them. It is a very powerless place to be when you when you feel that separation in your relationship because your spouse is feeling like on a different planet than you. It's calling for autonomy and it's calling for them both to awaken spiritually. It's calling for them to really own what it's bringing up for all of them. For Jada to feel safe enough to surrender this fight, to look within, to turn the noise down in their experience, to connect with what is true instead of searching on the outside or judging. And for Chris, I see his inner child. I see a little boy that was always picked on. And parents that actually I just see a mother. I really, I can't see a father. I don't know if his father wasn't in his life or if he just felt the absence of his father. And I feel that he, he hid a lot of the things that happened at school from his mother. I'm also seeing an aunt. <laughs> and all of this brought him to that part of him, that little boy that defended himself by coping with being funny. These are two little boys that coped with their life through humor. And although their, their comedy is medicine, and it is also calling for Chris to go higher, for him to no longer succumb to these cheap jokes that poke fun at one another, I've never understood that when they do roasts and it's supposed to be all these people that love you, yet they're all just trashing you. Like, I 
personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to sit there and listen to people um, that say that they love me talk horribly about me and pick apart everything about me. Like that just, that would be too painful. Now, regardless of all of that, what Chris said was not in a hateful way. And it is okay for us to, to, um, you know, play with one another, to say things jokingly. But there's a place where you need to draw the line and and that's when it's at the expense of other people when you are hurting someone's feelings or when you know you're just you're taking it too far there's a line I feel like laughing at someone is is poking fun at an expense of another. And I don't think that that's okay. I think that we make fun of ourselves because of this, this um, social normity for self-hatred. It's painful when I hear, it's painful when I read posts from myself nine years ago and the way I used to speak to myself and when I hear clients or friends speak so hatefully about themselves or apologize when they're in their power, like this makes no sense to me. And these are some of the things of like how our our experience has gotten so backwards and upside down. And it takes all of us really understanding all all points to understand everyone's experience and to be able to offer solutions to be able to be a bridge in conflicting situations instead of picking sides picking sides might make you feel better because you don't have to confront something within your inside yourself but it only adds to the wars within and without we must come back together we must see our oneness we must start feeling when we are cutting another that it is cutting ourselves in one day all of humanity will be sensitive enough to feel all of this and for the time being those of us who are sensitive enough to be the teller species in these moments need to stand up and say no We have to do it a different way. And what, what does that look like to you? What is something better? Instead of growing apathetic and feeling so jaded and defensive and separated that you just don't want to be here anymore. It's important for us to all look at the powerless parts within us because powerless is the lowest vibrational frequency emotion that we can feel right before death. And so when we are vibrating at a level of powerlessness, just being in that frequency can line you up with crossing the street and getting hit by a bus or, you know, some fluke accident that we hear about all the time and you wonder why. Why did that person die, but this person, you know, uh, flipped off a mountain, went through a car windshield, rolled down, you know, like, and they're like, fine. But they weren't sitting at a level of powerlessness. And so it's not 
to shame us when we're feeling powerless because there's there's a lot of things in this world that can make us feel very small and very powerless. And it is only when we fully surrender that we have no power other than the power of God within us. It is only by us fully surrendering our ego to allow for that truth to fully manifest can we see that. And so I have compassion for people in the public eye who have developed this character around the truth of who they are and it has made them feel safe in some ways um, for quite some time. It's given them an illusion of control in some ways. And so I almost feel like it is harder, maybe, maybe there needs to be no judgment on what is harder. Um, we all have our, our crosses to bear. And so in your own life, I just invite you to sit in quiet prayer and meditation today and just look at what in your life isn't working. What relationships have you experienced that were left unresolved? What trauma is still affecting you? How do you use the things that you've experienced in your life as reasons and defenses on why you're justified and righteous in your behavior, your attacks against others and against yourself. And then instead of shaming or hating yourself, instead go etherically. Go to the others that you have unresolved issues with and find a way to make peace and maybe it, it would be easier for some of us to to disidentify and so to disidentify is different than disassociation to disidentify is to pull our consciousness out of our body to then turn around and look at the situation and so you can have yourself and the other person standing having a conversation face to face and then take your consciousness and pull it outside of your body and turn and look at the situation to be the mediator within that scenario and then find a way to bring peace and love and healing to both parties and see how See how God shows up in your life to show you how fully supported you are in your healing and in your prayers. And so on that note, I am going to return to the stillness and communion as I, it's not that I don't ever allow myself to do nothing. But normally when I perceive that there is so much to, to take care of in order to find some sense of control in my life that feels like there's nothing I can do from, from here to fix or change what is currently happening. And... I got a notification today from my astrology app that said that I'm going through this period of, of um, sorting through all of the illusions in my life and relationships and finding what is really true for me and what really brings me joy and what I want to carry forward. And that... It also said that during this time that I can 
spend a hundred hours a week trying to work on something, just spinning my wheels and not really getting anywhere, or work 10 hours and get the same amount of work done. And so it invited me to, to set, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do um, and allow for this part that is clearly dying within me to die, to die well. <laughs> and to surrender the fear and attack thoughts that want to attach to something outside of myself to make me feel safer in this. Reminding myself in every moment that the only safety is surrendering into God. This is Kendra, the Divine Purpose Mentor. If you guys would like to work with me, you can schedule a session or join one of my courses or Divine Union intake at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. I love you all so very much. If this was helpful, please share it out and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.